So let's talk about a design approach with the Kaiser window. Kaiser window. So the Kaiser window approach is different from the way um, because it starts essentially from our ideal requirements of our filter, but in terms of of realistic requirements. Yeah. So so far, so far we have defined, for example, our brick response here. So it's our ideal low pass filter. But um, so that's here our frequency omega. And this is here H2, E2, J omega. But obviously we know that the actually the real response looks differently. Yeah, so the real response always looks like that we have some form of ripple, then we have a certain pass transition width here, and then we've got ripples in the stop band. Yeah, so this is our real approach, so the real result. So the Kaiser window, essentially, this approach starts from this real result by defining certain realistic ripples or allowing ripples in the pass band and ripples in the stop band. So the Kaiser window starts starts with realistic demands. Yeah, so we we allow we allow ripples and we allow a certain transition width. So we allow this and then our our result so what we are getting what we are getting out of this here that's a bit squeezed at the bottom here so it's a result as a result we're getting our number of tabs and and we're also getting a special special window function. Yeah, so that's the design principle of that. So how do we define our realistic response now? Realistic response. So the realistic response as we said, we have a we have ripples in the pass band, then we have a certain transition width, and then we've got these ripples in the stop band. So what we define here is our plus minus delta p, what we allow as ripples, and then we define a delta s here. Yeah, so so that's allowed or permitted permitted ripples. here and here. So this is here F and um, so this defines here our our FP and this is here our our FS for stop for stop band and then right in the middle here we've got our FC. So what we now define is is a delta which is the minimum of delta p and delta s because we cannot we can only take care in this kaiser approach with one delta but not with two so we take the worst case scenario so 
So then as the next step we convert this here into decibel. So now this is in decibel. So then then the next thing is what we what we do is we're defining our transition width. So a transition width is defined as delta omega equals two pi and then f s minus f p multiplied by t and this is our sampling interval. Okay, so once we have defined defined that so now with these parameters we can now calculate the number of tabs we require for this filter. Okay, so with this step now we can calculate the number numbers of tabs. So m equals a minus eight divided by two point two eight five delta omega and plus minus two as a tolerance here. This gives us a number of required tabs. So once we have generated that, we can create our window function. So the window function is quite a complex beast. So that's defined as W of n and then I0. This is a zeroth order Bessel function. And then 1 minus n minus alpha divided by alpha. Then this is squared. And um, and then this is here, taking the square root out of this. And then this is taken um, into the Bessel function. Then this is here divided by, by beta. So beta is 0.1102 a minus 8.7. Remember a was this factor we used to determine our number of tabs. So we use this if a is greater than 50. I have 842 and a minus 21 to power of 0 0.4 plus 0 0.0786 a minus 21 in case A is in the region of from 21 to 50. And otherwise beta is 0 for any for, for A smaller than 21. So now, so once we have got this beta, then um, we only need to define define our alpha and the alpha is just m half so this was just the number of tabs here so with that with that we are getting essentially our our window function w k of n so we just need to obtain this with given alpha and and beta. So now the only bit which is missing now is our actual impulse response. And the impulse response is just that one of our ideal low pass filter. Yeah so impulse response this is just the ideal 
low pass filter. Remember what we did here, so we had this realistic filter function which looks like that. And we defined these two frequencies here. Yeah, so this was our FP and this is here our was our FS, our stop band, and then our FC of our ideal low pass filter is just sitting bang in the middle here. Yeah, so what we need to define is we just need to get the impulse response of an ideal low pass filter which is sitting here. Yeah, so, so this is our ideal low pass filter here. Let's call this here HLP of N and then our actual coefficients. So H FIR and then just the multiplication of W of N, W of N, so our window function, our Kaiser window function multiplied by our H LP of N and with that we are getting our filter. So now the, the question is, so are there any design commands in MATLAB and Octave? And there are. Or Octave commands for Kaiser windows. So just as a as a reminder how this looks like here. So we had our our pass band ripple, then a transition width, and then our stop band here. So this one was here defined as plus minus delta P and this one here defined as delta S for our stop band. And remember, we could only have one delta, and this was just the worst case scenario of one of them, delta P, comma, delta S. So this delta here is taken. Okay, so then we also had these two frequencies here. So this was here our FP, our passband frequency here where the, where the passband ends and then we had here a frequency here called this is FS for the stop band here. Okay so with these parameters we can use the following MATLAB command here and this is called Kaiser ORT. So the first argument is just FP and FS. So if we have something like 0.1, then this is here just FP and this is here FS. Simple as that. Then the next two arguments are just the amplitudes for the pass band and for the stop band. So that's here pass band and stop band amplitudes. Usually just one and zero so that we have the have the one here and then obviously the zero the zero here. So these are these two amplitudes. So now the next step is here, for example, 0.05, and this is here our delta. Yeah, so the delta we have calculated here. That's obviously the most important part of the Kaiser design that we that we can define this delta here. And so with that, we define our permitted ripples here. And then the last argument is usually two and this usually analog frequency, but if we set this to to two, then we 
have the same convention as with any other filter design commands that the Nyquist frequency is 1. Yeah, so remember, normalized frequencies, normalized frequencies are multiplied by 2. Then we're getting this here out. Okay, so what do we get from the Kaiser Ort command? So the first part here, let's call this M, that's the number of tabs. So that's the first bit here. Then we're getting a W here. So W is just the frequencies for the FIR1 command. So the trick is we just feed this in, in the FIR1 command. And then and then obviously this this um ominous parameter beta here, which which is then used in the Kaiser window here. So beta parameter in the Kaiser window. Okay, so with that we can now finally create our impulse response and that's now pretty straightforward. So the coefficients so the coefficients so how do we get them? So we just use the standard FIR1 command for this. Remember the uh, idea of the Kaiser window approach is that our h of n is the Kaiser window of n multiplied by the h low pass ideal of n. And this and this one here is generated by the FIR one command. Quite a smart way of doing this. FIR1 and then we just feed into FIR1 our number of coefficients here. So let's call this here again M. Then we've got our W coming from the previous slide here and then we're just creating our Kaiser window which is just Kaiser and that's M plus 1 and then comma and then our beta and then we close that here and with this we are getting our coefficients here. So that's a quite a simple design process. So let's just try this out on an example here. So let's just um, create here our our beta, let's call this here well, beta maybe, so like like that. And um, Kaiser Ort 0.1 and then this runs to 0.12 for example and then these are our amplitudes for pass and stop band and let's allow an 0.05 as a tolerance and the 2 here. Okay so now we have generated all the parameters we need so now we can just generate our impulse response FIR1 and then we just put n comma the um, frequencies the um, Kaiser of n plus 1 comma beta okay and now let's just check how the frequency response of this looks like And this is here our Kaiser window filter with this with these specified ripples. So now let's let's keep these ripples or keep this plot here in mind and um 
keep just keep this plot here on the desktop and create a second figure and just create something which has lower ripples here. Let's let's call this here 0 0.005 and create a impulse response for this and plot the response with that and compare this here. So now here, here we've got this approach, here we've got the 0 0.05 and here we've demanded 10 times less ripple here and we see directly that this design command works quite well for that. This looks roughly 10 times less than this one here. So we see that we can con control the ripples here in the pass and stop band very well with this design approach.